Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at Laravel Jetstream, an authentication scaffolding provided by the Laravel team, and by default it supports Liveor and Inertia.js, I was going to say Alpine.js, Inertia.js, so it's a really cool tool, and let's take a look at it, so it provides us a nice looking dashboard panel, and I'm using the Liveor version, so as you guys can see when I'm updating my profile, it's happening live without any page reloads, uh, we have the ability to reset the password, so it comes with a profile page out the box, you don't need to implement any of this, it has two-factor authentication, which I really like. So anytime I'm using a building a Liver project, I always use Jetstream. Boom. Jetstream install, and then I customize it myself. You can see your browser sessions. All of these you can actually toggle on and off if you like. And let's log out and take a look at actually the login. So we'll have a login page. You can do forgot password. And it will send you a nice looking email. And we also have registration. So yeah, if you want to add that to your project, let's go ahead and do it. Okay, guys, so in order to install Jetstream, you need to make sure you have created a fresh Laravel 10 or above project as of now. So we're going to be installing Jetstream version 4. And I already have done that. I have a fresh Laravel 10 project right over here. I haven't done anything on it. So now that we need to do, guys, we need to go ahead and open up the Jetstream website. I will have the link in the description or just Google uh, Laravel Jetstream and it should be the first link, okay? It's jetstream.laravel.com. I will have the link in the description. Once you're on the Jetstream website, you can go ahead and click on installation. And it will actually give you the command for requiring Jetstream, which is going to be over here. So composer require Laravel Jetstream. Let's copy that, move it to our terminal, hit enter. So now composer will go ahead and install all the dependencies. Now, while that is happening, guys, Jetstream provides two stacks. One is using Livewire and one with Inertia.js, which is going to be, I believe, Vue.js and Inertia.js. So you can go ahead and install any of these that you like. Now, for today, I'm going to be installing Liver. That's probably the most popular stack, but you can go ahead and use uh, Inertia as well. It's up to you. So if you sc scroll down, there are going to be two commands, one for installing with Livewire and then one for Inertia.js, okay? So if you're a beginner and, uh, you know, you only know Livewire, go ahead and only install the Liver version. Now, if you want a Blade version, you J Jetstream isn't really for you. You can go ahead and take a look at uh, Laravel Breeze. I do have a video on Laravel Breeze. That one does provide a Blade only uh, front end. Okay, so uh, with Jetstream, you only have these two options. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the Liver command. Now there is a Teams version as well. If you do dash that dash Teams or tag tag Teams, it will go ahead and kind of give you some team functionality. You can have team members add them to Teams, remove things like that. I personally have never had to use this on my projects that I worked on, but if that is some functionality you need, you can go ahead and play around with it and see if it's something that's useful to, to you. So let's go ahead and do that now that it is done. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in, php art send jetstream install livewire. Now you can also go ahead and do tag tag dark or dash dash dark, and it will go ahead and give you the dark team as well as an option, okay? So if you want to enable that, you can go ahead and do that as well. So let's go ahead, hit enter. Now Jetstream will go ahead and basically move all the files that you need to your project, which is why you need to have a fresh Laravel uh, install. If you have some existing files, some of your files might get corrupted. So you want to always do it on a fresh Laravel install. If you do it on an existing project, if things break, you have to manually go ahead and fix them. So uh, the best way is always to do on a new project. So it will go ahead and do that for you now. In the documentation, it recommends you do uh, npm install run build and also migrate your database. So by default, when you do Jetstream install, as you guys can see, it actually did run npm install and npm run build, but we can go ahead and do it again. This will go ahead and compile all our front-end assets. So I already have done that. Let's go ahead and do npm run build. And this will go ahead and compile your assets for production. Okay, minify them, you know, only uh, kind of get the use the uh, Tailwind classes and all that. And the last step, guys, we need to migrate our database. Now, in order to migrate it, guys, you need to make sure you have set up your .env file. So make sure on your .env file, you have set up your database connection. So for me, I'm using my uh, root user for now for local development, and I have a database of auth as well set up. So let's go open it up. And I'm going to say php auth send migrate, okay? Boom, it will go ahead and migrate our database. And now we can go ahead and test it out, okay? So let's go back to our project. I'm going to do a quick reload. And now you should be able to see this login and register at the top. Okay, so let's go ahead, click on login. This is how it looks. We can go back and look at register. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a new account. So we can go ahead and check out the profile page. Okay. 
let's click on register and that's it guys we have already logged in so you will get a nice looking dashboard all of this is customizable you can go ahead and update all the view files you want at the top there's also a menu and you can click on the profile page and uh, basically Jetstream out the box gives you the update profile if you want that which is very nice and you can add more you know fields or columns here if you like it comes with an update password basically all apps need this and my favorite is going to be this two-factor authentication which is great if you want to make sure your apps are secure and then you can also show browser sessions and also that gives you the ability to delete your accounts okay and all of these are customizable you can disable these if you want Okay, so let's take a look at the code before we leave. Uh, if you guys are interested, I can make a separate set of videos on customizing every aspect of Jetstream. But by default, basically, uh, there are no routes if you are using Jetstream, okay? There is only these few routes that you can see here, which is basically just the dashboard page, okay? Unlike uh, Laura Breeze, where we had all the authentication routes, right? For login, register, all of those things. We don't really have that for Jetstream. So Jetstream is a bit different from how it does. It works compared to... A lot of breeze. However, you can go ahead and update your dashboard page, right? Because that's user facing. It's not really a Jetstream thing. And then on the view side, if you guys take a look, we have quite a few files actually, a lot more than a lot of breeze. There is an API section, and this is if you want to enable uh, API mode. Uh, I haven't covered it here, but you can also have uh, API tokens and provide those to your users so they can use your APIs if you have them. Uh, there is all under the auth folder, there are going to be all the pages for, you know, Confirm password, forget password, login, two-factor. And if you want to update any of these guys, you can just come over here and, you know, make any changes you would like to do, okay? Uh, the components is going to be all the Blade components. So, for example, on this two-factor page, you can see there is a X label, right? These are Blade components. So, that X is for the Blade components prefix. So, if you want to update any of these, you can go ahead inside this components folder and find the corresponding component. For example, this one is label and input. Let's find input or maybe label. Yeah, here. So it's basically a simple input with some uh, Tailwind CSS classes, right? So if you want to update this, you can just go ahead and make some changes. Let's say, does it doesn't have a background actually. It has a border gray 300. Let's say I make it border uh, blue 300, okay? And after you make a change, uh, you need to recompile the assets again. So one way you can do that is you can say npm run build. This will go ahead and prepare it for your production. Or if you want to have it kind of run in the background and update this as you use it, you can do npm run dev. And this will kind of set up a local server and it will look for your changes and automatically update it. So let's go ahead and take a look if that change actually worked. As you can see, now we have kind of blue borders, okay? So quite easy to customize. You can go ahead and update that. If you have bootstrap, just come over here, remove all of this, and then replace it with the bootstrap input CSS class, okay? I think it's form group or something like that. Uh, I forgot. So you can go ahead and do that. And all of these are, again, customizable. And then there is going to be your email templates. You want to change them. The layout files. So app is for the dashboard. And then guest is for the login and register page. Okay. The initial one pages we saw when we are not logged in. So you can come and customize these as well if you guys like. For example, maybe I want to update this background to blue 100. Let's do 300 so it's a bit more visible. And now we get a blue background, okay? So this is basically uh, the layout file for the dashboard page. And this is where you basically the actual page content are injected. And then for the profiles, you can see there is a profile page and they have very good names, guys. Delete user form, you can see basically each of them are named very well. So if you want to update any of these, uh, you can go ahead and do that inside this show.blade. This is where actually all of these are imported, right? So these are all actually live wire components, as you guys can see. They are imported over here or included over here. Live wire, live wire again, right? So you can go ahead and customize these. Now, you won't have access to the actual live wire component, but you can kind of customize their functionality a little bit. So at the top under your app, there is a folder called actions. And basically your, the logic for updating all of these is going to be controlled inside this actions for a folder. Okay, so there's a one for Fortify and one for Jetstream. So under Fortify, you will have all your authentication related stuff or the user related stuff. So if you want to update, for example, the create user functionality, maybe you have added, let's say a username to your form, HTML form for the front end on the register page. This is actually the method that handles that registration. So you can go ahead and here add 
let's say username, you need to do the exact same thing on your front end as well for the registration page, validate it and then store it in the, you know, uh, users table as well. Okay, something like this. And if you guys would like, I can make a separate video on actually how to do this. But this is a file uh, you want to use for this. And then same for, you know, password reset. So all of these, you can go ahead and change the functionality if you need. I personally have never uh, had to change this. The only things you may want to change is going to be your update. In case you need some additional fields, this one I have changed multiple times and then the create user. Okay, and usually all you have to do is just add a new validation rule and then update this create. Okay, that's it. We can easily add new fields over here. And same for update as well. And then for password validation and other stuff, honestly, I probably have never changed them. Same for delete user. And that's it for Laravel Jetstream, guys. It's an awesome scaffolding if you're building a, a library app. I almost always use Jetstream when I'm using or building a library application from the ground up uh, because it's just awesome, especially the profile page. I like the two-factor authentication. It just takes a lot of time to implement these yourself, okay? And I think it's better than uh, Laravel uh, Breeze if you're using library. If you want to do... Uh, you know, something else, maybe just do use VA view or maybe inertia. Maybe you can sometimes use uh, Breeze. It's up to you, but these are two really good options over here. And you can customize almost every aspect of it. And that's it, guys, for today's video. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, smash that like button and subscribe so you get notified of the latest videos. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.